Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new Codex Micro S2 FPV camera. In this video I'm going to go over its features, measure its latency, and then I'm going to head outdoors and compare it side by side with the Codex Turbo Micro S1, the Runcam Micro Swift 2, and the Foxeer Micro Aero Pro. Inside the package we're getting the camera along with the lens cover, a mounting bracket, an OSD control board, and finally some connectors, screws, and also a hex driver. The Micro S2 is available in three colors, so you can either get it in yellow, black, or green, and you will have also to choose the picture format. It's not unfortunately configurable for the OSD, so when you buy it, you will have to select either PAL or NTSC. Just like the S1, it features a 600 TV line sensor, and its aspect ratio is four by three, and again, it's not configurable for the OSD. So the major difference between the S1 and the S2 is the lens. The S1 is using an M8 lens, so you can see it is much smaller than the S2. And the S2 is using the Turbo I lens, which is an M12 lens. And this is the same lens that is used with the Codex Total. In terms of dimensions, the S2 weighs 6.46 grams. So because it's using a bigger lens, it is a little bit heavier than the S1, which weighs 5.84 grams. Its back dimensions are the standard 19 by 90 millimeters, and the distance between the back part of the camera to the front of the lens is about 20 millimeters. Entering the camera OSD settings is done by pressing the center joystick button. Then we can set the exposure. So we can set over here under the submenu the shutter speed, the brightness, AGC, DWDR, which by default is turned on, and you can also adjust under the submenu these settings. You can also set the backlight between off, which is a default option, VLC and HLC. And under each option, you have also other options. For example, you can see that under HLC, now it's set to all day. But if I change it to night mode, you can see that now the image has changed. And I recommend to tweak the backlight settings if you're flying at night. Then we can set the white balance. So we have a couple of presets to choose from, and you can also set it manually. Under day and night, you can choose either color or black and white, and you can set under the black and white submenu also these settings. So we can set the IR smart between off and on, and the IR level can be set between high and low. Then under the image adjustment submenu, we can set the lens shadow. 2D and R can be set to on and off. We can mirror the image. So this is not very useful for FPV. We don't have any flip options. So I won't be able, unfortunately, to flip the camera image. You can also adjust the font color, the contrast, sharpness, and display can be changed between CRT and LCD. And then under each option, you have also another submenu, so you have more options to tweak. You can also display a negative image. Again, not a very useful option for FPV. You can perform a DPC calibration, and the language can be set between English and Chinese. Finally, we can also perform a camera factory reset and we can exit the menu, and then it's going to save all the options that you changed. Accessing the OSD display settings is done by holding the joystick to the bottom. Then you can set the call sign. You can also choose if you want to display the value on the screen or not. So you have the name, timer, power, and also the horizon bar. So you can choose if you want to display them or not by pressing the center button. So now it was turned on and off. And you can also set its position. So for example, you can see that now we can move around the call sign. Pressing the exit is going to save your settings. Now I measured the latency of both Micro S1 and Micro S2 FPV cameras, and I shot this video at 240 frames per second, which means every frame is about four milliseconds. Let's start with the Micro S2. And after turning off the light, you can see that the light was turned off also on the FPV screen. So I can estimate that the latency of this camera is about four milliseconds. Moving on to the Codex Micro S1, you can see that after turning off the light, it took a little bit longer for the image to be totally black on the FV screen, and I think that the latency of this camera is somewhere between 4 to 8 milliseconds. Now I'm going to show the difference in terms of image, so I place the cameras on the same position. This is the image of the S1, and this is the image of the S2, so I think that the viewing angle is about the same, and you can see that the colors of the S1, in my opinion, are better than the S2 because you can see that the green on the S2 looks a little bit bluish, where the green on the S1 looks more realistic, in my opinion. 
The next thing I've done is to head outdoors and compare the Cadex Micro S2 with the Cadex Micro S1, the Foxeer Aero Micro Pro, and the Runcam Micro Swift 2. Unfortunately, I had some issues with the DVR and also with this camera, so this review is not complete and I'm going to post another side-by-side -side comparison after I'm going to get a new camera from Cadex and then I'm also going to post some flight footage. So I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.